If you want to determine if two substituents on a cyclohexane ring are cis or tran, you need to see whether they're on the same side of the ring or on opposite sides of the ring. So if we plane a representation of a cyclohexane, then if you have two things that are both shown with a wedge, so for example this CH3 here and this bromine here, because they're both shown with a wedge, these are cis. They're both coming towards you out of the page. They're both towards the top of the ring, if we call the top of the ring outside of the page. So this would be an example of cis. If instead one was a wedge, so let's put our CH3 as a wedge, and the BR was a dash, then one of them's coming towards us out of the page, that's the CH3, while the BR is going into the page. So they're on opposite sides of the ring, so we call this trans. If we wanted to put these into chair conformations, then over on this chair conformation on the right here for the first one, we just need to pick any carbon as being our number one, which I'm going to arbitrarily put as the one with the CH3 on it. So let's say that I picked this carbon right here to be that number one carbon. Well, CH3 goes up. Okay, well, the two possible orientations of substituents on this ring are straight up in the axial position or down in the equatorial position. I'm going to call this up here the top of the ring. And so if I want the CH3 coming towards me, towards the top of the ring, I need to put the CH3 up in this axial position. The other substituent off of this carbon is the hydrogen. Now if we want to go over to the number two, that will be right here. And so now off of this one, the two possible orientations are straight down in the axial position or slightly up in the equatorial position. We want the BR to be going up. Out of these two possible positions, the one that's closer to the top of the ring is this equatorial one, the BR. So there's the H. So this is what these, this cis molecule looks like in its chair conformation. So what you do to figure out if you were given just the chair conformation is you'd look at one carbon and you'd look at the two substituents on it, the H and the BR, and you'd say, okay, the BR is closer to the top of the ring. You'd look at the other carbon and you'd say, okay, there's an H and a CH3, and the CH3 is closer to the top of the ring. Both substituents are closer to the top of the ring, and so this is cis. If we wanted to draw the other chair conformation, then we could just pick any carbon which is going to put the CH3 group, now instead of the axial position, we want to put in the equatorial position, and that will represent the chair flip of this molecule. One way that we could do that is pick this as carbon number one. The reason I know I can do that is because it's a down point, the position, the substituent position that's going to be closer to the top of the ring, so still up, is going to be equatorial. So I can put the CH3 there. Now this carbon here will be number two, and the possible positions are straight up or slightly to the right here. And the BR needs to be on top, closer to the top of the ring. So there it is there, and here is the hydrogen. So this is the other chair conformation. You'll notice that the BR, which was equatorial, is now axial, so both substituents have switched their relative orientations, but they're still, in relation to the carbon they're bonded to, they're still both the substituents that are closer to the top of the ring. It's still cis and they're still both closer to the top of the ring, even though they've switched their axial versus equatorial positions. Now if we wanted to figure out which of these was more stable, then the more stable one is the one that puts this BR in the axial position versus putting the CH3 in the axial position because the CBR bond, so this bond right here, is longer than the CH3 bond and that puts it out of the way of the shorter CH bonds. So this BR has very little interaction with these H's, whereas the CH3 over here has a lot of steric interaction with these axial hydrogens. So this over here on the right is more stable because the CBR bond is longer and it gets it out of the way of those axial hydrogens so there's not as much steric interaction. Now for the bottom, for what trans looks like on a cyclohexane, so let's t pick this different carbon now as our number one. So let's, let's say we put it right here as number one. So let's put straight up and off to the side as our two possible orientations of substituents. We want the CH3 closer to the top of the ring, so I'm going to put it up here. That happens to put it on the axial position. Now, number two will be the next one over, so right here. 
these are the two possible orientations. Br has to be closer to the bottom of the ring, so the hydrogen is going to be at the top and the Br is going to be at the bottom. You'll notice that both of the substituents here are in the axial positions, and this is trans because on this carbon there's one substituent down and one up, and the CH3, so the non-hydrogen substituent is the one that's up, and over on carbon number two here, the non-hydrogen substituent is the one that's closer to the bottom of the ring. So one's closer to the top, one's closer to the bottom, so it's trans. Now we can draw the ring flip. So let's say that this now is carbon number one. So this, it was an up point, now I'm picking one that's a down point. And so here, closer to the top of the ring is now going to be in the equatorial position. So the CH3 from the axial position has now gone to the equatorial position. And this carbon here can be number two, and it will put Br in the equatorial position. Because both substituents are in the equatorial position in this second representation, it is the more stable. Now, if you started with just a ring that had substituents on it, so let's say we had this ring here, and the Br was here, and let's put a Cl here, and these as Hs. If you wanted to figure out whether this was cis or trans, I'd start with one carbon here, and I'd say, okay, there's an H that's closer to the top and a Br that's closer to the bottom. So for this carbon, the substituent is closer to the bottom of the ring. If I look at this carbon here, we've got an H going down and this Cl is more going up. So the Cl is closer to the top of the ring. Since one substituent is closer to the bottom and the other is closer to the top, this is a trans ring. Now let's draw a completely different molecule. So these are unrelated, but let's say we have something where going straight down here is a Br. And then let's say that over here, I have a CH3 group, and up here there's a hydrogen, and over here there's a hydrogen. So if we wanted to figure it out for these, on this carbon here there's a hydrogen that's going closer to the top of the ring, and a CH3 that's going closer to the bottom. So for this carbon, the non-hydrogen substituent is closer to the bottom. Now I look at the other carbon. There's a hydrogen going closer to the top, and a Br going closer to the bottom. So for this carbon, the non-hydrogen substituent is also closer to the bottom. So this is an example of a cis molecule. Let's try a couple more. So if we had a OH group, so an alcohol here, and over here we had a CH3, then on this carbon, the CH3 is closer to the top than the hydrogen. And on this carbon, the OH group is closer to the top than the hydrogen, and so this is a cis group. Now if we had a group where we had a Cl going up here, and let's say that we had a Br going equatorial here, at this carbon the Cl is closer to the top of the ring than the hydrogen, so this is top, and over here, the H is closer to the top and the Br is closer to the bottom. Since one's closer to the top and one's closer to the bottom, this is trans. You can use the same basic method to figure out whether any ring is cis or trans. So if you're given the ring, look at the relative positions on each carbon. If both substituents are closer to the top, it's cis. If both substituents are closer to the bottom, it's cis. And if one is closer to the top and the other is closer to the bottom, then it's trans. If you're given a planar representation like one of these two here, then you can just look, are both substituents wedges or both substituents dashes, in which case it's cis, and if you have one of each, then the substituents are trans.